guys, welcome to your ecology video notes. Now you should be familiar with ecology from biology that you've already taken, but we're going to take a little bit of a different approach and focus on ocean ecology and more specifically human impact and plastic. So in an ecosystem, there are interactions. Well, we start very small with just simply an organism. And as we travel to a biosphere, you also have an increase in complexity. So those increasing interactions are going to happen more and more frequently the larger your area is. So some general definitions. So an organism you should know is just simply an individual. A population is a group of those individuals. Your community is a group of a bunch of different populations. Ecosystems where your non-living factors come into play as well. And then a biome is ecosystems with the same climate. And you can see that increasing complexity in this image to the right. So let's take a closer look at abiotic and biotic factors. So biotic, the prefix bio, living. So these are living components of an ecosystem, your producers, consumers, decomposers, your abiotic, A without, so non-living components, temperature, sunlight in the ocean, we have tides, wave action, and sadly, pollution. So let's talk more also about ecosystem limiting factors. So limiting factors are going to restrict your population numbers your reproduction and overall distribution of that population. So there's two kinds. There's density independent factor, which is going to happen regardless of your population size or your density of your population. These are things like weather events and pollution. So we look over here at this polar bear global warming. It doesn't matter whether the polar bear population is two or 200, they're still going to be affected. Density dependent, on the other hand, does depend on population size. So when you have large populations, they're competing for resources, diseases spread faster through the populations, and you also have parasites. So let's look at our image here and let's examine this ocean ecosystem. So density dependent factors, so factors that are determined by the population size. So we have the school of fish here, so they're going to compete for resources. There might even be some disease. And then density independent factors, so you see all this pollution kind of human impact here. Those are density independent. They're going to happen regardless of how many animals are in that population. The next thing we're going to talk about is the energy flow and specifically a food chain. So by now you should be very familiar with a food chain. It's just a simple model of energy flow from one organism to the next. The arrow is always pointing to whoever is doing the consuming. So if you notice in this picture, the fish, for example, eats the crustacea. So the arrow points to the fish because the fish is getting the energy from the crustacean. We also need to talk about our levels. So phytoplankton is the producer. Our crustacea is our primary consumer. Fish is our secondary consumer. Dolphins are tertiary. And lastly, our quaternary or our like top predator, apex predator, is a killer whale. So energy pyramids are also just kind of a different way of representing a food chain. So that's showing the actual energy flow through the trophic levels. Now, if you notice, I already have arrows on the screen. There's arrows that are pointing to the next level, but then there's also arrows exiting. So I really want you to remember this 10% rule. What that's stating is 10% of your available energy is moving on to the next trophic level, but 90% of it's lost. And that's why you see such large population sizes at your bottom versus your top predators. There's not really a lot of top predators in general because they need much more energy to sustain themselves and it's, you're losing energy as you move up the energy pyramid. So a food web is also food chain related, but it's many interacting food chains. And there's lots of different animals we want to talk about quickly in terms of their nutrition. So producers, those are ones that make their own food, so like a plant. An herbivore is only going to eat plant material. These are typically your primary consumers. Omnivores eat both plants and animals, and those are typically a secondary consumer. Then you have your carnivores, which are at the higher end of, of your food chain. Detritivores are going to eat dead things. They're, they're kind of scavengers. They eat dead and decaying things. Well, decomposers themselves actually break down things, so things like mushrooms. So there's some other terms I want you to be familiar with, with, with 
ecosystem energy flow. So we have competition, right? So you know the word competition very well. If you ever compete against somebody, right? You're fighting for a playing spot or your position in band, what chair you're in. So competition is between animals that maybe eat the same food source or animals within the same population, but they're still competing. So you look at this food web here and you see the squid. All of these animals eat squid. So they're all going to be competing for that food source. Predation, on the other hand, is when something eats something else. So in the food web, your top organisms over here are going to be your top predators. They eat prey. A niche is the region that an animal occupies within its food web or its ecosystem. So think about whales, things like that. They're typically kind of more on the surface. They feed on the surface versus starfish, your crabs, your mollusks, they're gonna be more of a benthic or a bottom feeder. So their niche is just where they are in the ecosystem. All right, and finally we have our strategists. So an R and K strategist. So R strategists are those organisms that produce lots and lots and lots of offspring. Um, many of them don't survive to adulthood. Whereas a K strategist is going to be your larger animals, once again up here, that produce very small amounts of offspring. So they may only have one every couple of years. Next, we're gonna talk about some relationships. So the easiest way to do this is with smiley faces and sad faces. So parasitism in general is when one is happy and the host or the one being attacked by the parasite is sad. For an example, we have a fish here that has lamprey that attached to it and suck its blood. Commensalism is when one is happy and the other is just kind of, eh, I mean, you're not really hurting me, you're not really helping me, I, you might be a little annoying, but we can make this work. So an example here would be these fish. So they're swimming with the turtle. They're happy because turtles aren't really the cleanest eaters, so they have lots of messy scraps, but the turtle might sometimes get a little annoyed by the fish. Lastly, you have mutualism, which is where they're both mutual or they're both happy. So our example here are sea anemone and our clownfish. So sea anemones um, like the filtration and the movement of the clownfish throughout their tentacles, whereas the clownfish gets protection from the sea anemone. So now the bad part. So human impact. So humans in general harm the ocean in many, many ways on a daily basis. So there's things like pollu pollution. This is a river actually here in India. There's carbon dioxide emissions. We have toxic waste. We have lots of litter. The list just goes on and on. So we're going to get into some of the major components and we'll focus a lot more on plastic and glass as well. So first of all, the greenhouse effect. Hopefully you've heard of this by now, but a quick little summary is it's a constant release of excess CO2 and it's resulting in the atmosphere trapping the gases. Well, unfortunately, you know how greenhouses work, right? They keep heat in. So our whole planet is kind of like a greenhouse and our planet's warming over time. The oceans, as a result, are absorbing a lot of this excess heat. So the temperature of the oceans is increasing. This is contributing to that melting of ice caps, the rising water levels. Globally, the ocean now actually rises one inch a decade, which is a ton. We also have ocean acidification. So this is becoming a larger and larger problem. Um, the ocean itself is absorbing excess CO2 and a little bit of chemistry refresher for you. So that's producing carbonic acid. Well, what's the problem with that? Well, ocean organisms need this free carbonate to build their exoskeletons, and not to mention the ocean pH is becoming more acidic, resulting in coral bleaching, which we will focus on a lot more. So I'm gonna play this little video for you. It just quickly kind of shows you that chemical reaction. bicarbonate ions and hydrogen ions. As the concentration of hydrogen ions increases, seawater becomes more acidic. Many marine organisms depend on carbonate ions to build calcium carbonate for their shells and skeletons. As acidity increases, some of the extra hydrogen ions react with carbonate ions.
forming more bicarbonate and making it harder for these organisms to grow. When ocean acidity increases too much, carbonate shells and skeletons can even start to dissolve. In this case, hydrogen ions react with the solid calcium carbonate, converting it to soluble bicarbonate and calcium ions. Learn more at aspace.org. All right. Oops. So our ocean acidification in general, this is just kind of a projected outcome. So as you see, the yellow, the orange, the almost parts of red showing up in projected 2095 is showing a lot of ocean acidification. Another concept you need to be aware of is eutrophication. So this is land runoff, and typically it's just from excess fertilizer, from farming, from um, animal waste, but it's causing nitrogen and phosphorus to enter bodies of water. As a result, plant life or algae is exploding and all the animals die as a result. And I'll show you a little clip of that as well. signs up that says do not go in the water. There's very few places now that are not being impacted by harmful algal blooms. incentivize and light a fire under a quicker adoption of practices and that can really only come from accountability and that can only come from regulations and policies that mandate that farmers embrace these practices. All right, so as you can see, it's becoming a huge issue as well in our fresh bodies of water and our saltwater bodies of water. So toxins in the food chain are also something that's directly impacting us. So there's two terms you need to be familiar with. The first is bioaccumulation. So this is an increase in a single organism over time or over its lifespan. It gets more and more contaminants in itself. Whereas biomagnification is the increase of a pollutant as it moves through the food chain. So your smaller organisms have less of this pollutant than the larger organisms, which is designated in this picture with the red dots. So plastic pollution is also a huge problem, and it's kind of been the forefront of everything right now. So a little history, after World War II, with better technology, plastic was much more widespread. Then Time Magazine released this a magazine article, which was saying that let's use disposable plastics. No one wants to spend all day doing dishes. And unfortunately, now it's a way of life. And it's found everywhere, even on uninhabited islands. So some problems. There's things called nurdles or mermaid tears, which are your pre-production plastic pellets. Animals eat them because they look like eggs and they think they're food. And they're found on almost every beach in the world. Additionally, the food chain, guess who's at the top? We are. We eat at the top of the food chain and plastic biomagnifies as you move up. So toxins are going to hitchhike on those plastics and they cause lots of issues in humans. So the other issue here is in a lot of countries, they rely on fish as their major protein source. So we're going to talk about it a lot in class. I really want to kind of instill in you guys something to really look at and kind of examine your way of life and maybe how you can help this problem as well. But we definitely need to be aware of our oceans and the human impact that we're causing. And that's it for your notes.